Yeah, please go Can ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, it was it was nice to hear uh, Nageshwar uh, and uh, does discuss about his device. Can I ask Alka, my colleague? Yes, uh, fast because it's already ten minutes. Yeah, uh, so presenting the. So can I present, sir? Uh, uh, Alka, go ahead. Yeah, uh, we are uh, presenting the second case of Madras Medical Mission. It's a nine-year-old girl who had underwent AST surgical closure at three years and she was not on routine follow-up. She was asymptomatic except for slow weight gain. Recently, she had some non-specific non chest pain and she was re-evaluated re from elsewhere and was referred to us with a, uh, with, uh, uh, with a history of right atrium to aortic root. There was some abnormal connection and they were referred to us. Uh, on examination, the child was thin built but active, alert and hemodynamically stable. Uh, the pulse volume was high volume and collab uh, collapsing. There was cardiomegaly, S1 is normal, and S2 was widely split. We could hear a uh, grade 3 continuous murmur in the lower sternal border. This is the ECG of the child, uh, which had sinus rhythm with a PR interval of 120 milliseconds, QRS axis of plen uh, plus 105, and normal LV forces. The X-ray uh, is a bit rotated. It had a CT uh, ratio of 60 percentage with MPA segment dilatation and RA enlargement. There is pulmonary plethora. Uh, uh, the five this is the epical five chamber view which is uh, showing an abnormal connection between the uh, iot uh, aortic root and the RA. In this short axis view we can see that there is a uh, uh, connection with, uh, from the non coronary cusp to the uh, uh, right atrium. So it is the uh, RSOV from the NCC to RA and here we have the measurement of around 9 millimeter. Thank you. Any long axis view? So, uh, Dr. Nageshwaro wants a long axis view of the echo, showing the demonstrating that no, RSO. It is uh, classically uh, coming from the non coronary. Uh, NCC to RA. If you have additional view, it's a fine. Yeah, it's additional view, it's fine. Otherwise, it's okay. You yeah. proceed. Proceed. Uh, Shiva. Nage Nageshwar, uh, actually, the additional uh, views have not been loaded in the PowerPoint. Okay, that's, that's fine. fine. Uh, but that's uh, now I would like to show the hemodynamics. So you can appreciate that there is a wide pulse pressure uh, and the pulmonary artery pressures are uh, like not very high. It was around 33 by 10 with a mean of 20. We did not take any QPQS uh, uh, because of a little lack of time right now. I just know we got the punctures. I'll show the angiogram. Being a non-coronary cusp, yeah, our no, view it, is... No, it has to be closed. Any kind of RSOV no, has to be closed irrespective of the size. I wanted to do this case after you have presented, but uh, like you know, probably the time got uh, no, it's okay, uh, sure. like in the timing so you, of the you think live case a, got different. You think it's a congenital yeah. or it is acquired? You think it's a congenital or it is acquired? No, no, the surgeon has closed the ASD at three years, so yeah, it's so likely it's, that it was uh, the, the, there it's was congenital. no. So it, it was it, it was a, it was a aortic junction that yeah. probably ruptured recently. Yeah, then I think the, it's a congenital. The rupture, probably, the, the child came with a, yeah, the child came with a non-specific non chest pain. And usually when uh, small children come with chest pain, we tend to feel that they are not of ominous significance. But in this child, status of the sinus of Alsalva, aneurysm from an unruptured status to a ruptured status. Now, uh, RMO view now shows that I have a mouth of the sac, the, uh, the beginning part is around 7 millimeter and uh, the RA end, the maximum dimension was coming to close to about 6 millimeter and we tend to uh, a 10 8 uh, PDA device. So right, there's uh, one in the pulmonary artery and one in the aorta, so now I'm going live with this. Uh, I, I, I actually our ten, our uh, pr plan is to go retrograde, uh, snare it in the right atrium, put a long sheath, and then close from the vein. Suggestion about the method. Yeah, Any yeah. other panelists? Yeah. 
I, I think sure. that is absolutely perfect method in this particular case. Unless patient is sick, you want to do retrograde very rapidly using muscular device or maybe conar multifunctional, uh, only small defects we close. Uh, that's, I think, absolutely, uh, definitely okay. Uh, Professor Jairangnath has got large experience. He can give a, maybe you can uh, give a comment to Jay. Uh, can you get me the right coronary address? No, this is uh, generally, this is one of the best device for the RSOV, the ADO1. Though you can close this RSOV with the MFO, ADO2 if it is too small, muscular VS, VSDs you can use if you want to as Nagishwara said, we want to be uh, used very quickly in older people, slightly older age group, we can go through the aortic side. Uh, but otherwise, the one of the NCC to RA is one of the easiest uh, to deal with that because it always enters the RA, you can snare it out from the SVC or IVC or wherever they from the side. It is a very standard, it sits very nicely the uh, ADO1 devices. So the snaring doesn't take much time, I think Shiva is doing that. So for NCC rupture, APVU and RAO are better, shallow RAO, AP also is better. For RCC to RVOT, then you have to go to lateral or more RAO, that is around 45 degrees RAO is uh, ideal. Here I think he has chosen uh, uh, the RAO and AP also showing good picture. So he is in the right side of the heart. So now we are crossing the RSOV. Yeah. So now come to AP view. Yeah. So I was crossing in the RAO projection. Now I will go to AP projection. I do not want to enter the tricuspid vein. Catheter away. Is now it is entering the inferior vena cava or maybe the hepatic vein. As far as possible, you should avoid uh, we, we, uh, going we, through we the tricuspid We do not want to get trapped. Avoid, uh, trapped in the tricuspid Yeah, it looks a straight path actually. Straight path. As you put the catheter, we can appreciate that you are away from the tricuspid yeah. wall operator. So it does not enter the tricuspid wall, it just comes oh, into show the me here. Yes. Show me this. So this is a this is a life tech secure one way snare. to confirm that you are not this trapped into the tricuspid uh, cord eye is that you put the catheter on that. If catheter goes into the IVC, that means you are absolutely not trapped into the. So that helps in either VST or in this kind of interventions. Yeah, I agree. Fifteen millimeter snare. So uh, while. Uh, We'll so we have got the snare and we will get the snare to the tip of the wire so that unnecessarily I do not bend the distal part. So now we are pulling the snare out. So we are we are planning to close it with a 10 8 uh, uh, Life Tech PDA device. So you can use a. I'm putting an artery clamp. Yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, sister, the sheet, sheet ma. Yeah, I have, I have with me Farin Qureshi, who is now in her uh, completing her second year, and the sister Salomi, who is uh, now threading the teeth. Uh, 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 Mr. Mohammed is the. Seven, he seven millimeter. Mohammed is the radiology yeah. technical yeah. expert. So what? What is the sheet? So now uh, I want another Shiva? artery four steps. Shiva, what is the sheet? It's a long flexor sheet. Oh. It's a long straight flexor sheet. Yeah. This is one important. We can point use a malin uh, sheet yeah. also. No, you can use a mullein sheet in RA is okay, uh, but go, if go, you are go. trying to close a device, uh, yeah. RSOV from the into the RV or RVOT, always you should use a braided sheet because it has to take multiple curves. The regular mullein sheet will uh, with fold, a lot of uh, kinking will happen. So it, that's only. And uh, with RA you can use any sheet; it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, I I totally agree with you, uh, Jay. Uh, so what we are now going to do is. Uh, connect this uh, aortic sheath's uh, side arm to pressures so that I will know when I am coming from the aorta into the right atrium. So again I am connecting this to the pressure. Still again. 
with the wire. I'm flushing my lines. This is pigtail, ma? Pigtail. Yeah, pigtail with the wire, ma? Unless you are. Uh, so I while we are taking the. Pigtail? You are putting the pigtail. Uh, uh, no, the pigtail is for the anatomical location of where is my non coronary cusp. Okay. I will place it at the lowermost point of the non coronary cusp so that it. I do not use contrast at all due to. No, very, very sick people, RSOV can Catheter. come as an emergency, so you should worry about the contrast. A lot of people we have done when the creatine is around 3, 4, renal done. azotemia, renal, renal failure. Three, so, most of the things avoid using contrast, most of the things can be done using the uh, just a TE or echocardiogram, uh, some landmark. And it is not very difficult. Advance the wire. So, now uh, the Shobo, get into the same RAO, same projection. Now, I will keep this catheter in the same sinus. So that that uh, come to RAO, the same projection. Very frequently asked questions and doubts come to the RSOV closures as coronaries you are worried. Coronaries will never come in the problem. Coronaries are never a problem in a congenital RSO. They are why anatomically they are located somewhere else. So you do not have to worry about the coronaries. It is a very valuable point uh, Dr. Jai Ranganath what he is describing. The coronaries come from the upper end of the sinotubular right. junction whereas the ventriculo aortic junction is the place of. Can you can you give me a small loader? Okay, now open sister uh, open the device the uh, show the box. So, this is a 10 8 device which has got a 14 millimeter aortic retention skirt, 10 millimeter at the aortic end and 8 millimeter at the pulmonary end. So, now we are loading it. Any questions, any other doubt? Any questions? So, Jai, actually it is pleasure to do in front of you. You are the master of RSOV. Uh, no. There are masters of Abernathy, <laughs> masters of RSOV sitting in the crowd. And uh, Abernathy is sitting next to me. You know, like uh, the textbooks. <laughs> yeah, RSOV a textbook is there. Yes. And uh, so now I am I am slowly withdrawing. This is the reason why I keep the non coronary cusp. Yeah, the, ca the catheter. Uh, the catheter will act like a landmark landmark for me. Yeah. Otherwise, you can just a very small. I am coming on pressure enough. guidance. Can dilute the contrast. You can use a phi uh, 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 instead of using. Show the pressure. Because uh, everybody would like to see that. I am continuously showing the pressure. No, no, no. We want to. Uh, be are you seeing the pressure? No, no, no. We want to. Uh, are, are you not seeing the pressure on the left side of the screen? Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. You can Go see ahead. that. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. It is uh, uh, actually. Yeah. Actually, I, made, trace. I, I kept it as a hemodynamically. Tampered trace RA. Okay. Uh, actually, I mean make it. Trace. Yeah, now. Uh, okay. that's, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. A good right. construction is there. Now, I Very want an. Uh, so, what happened Muhammad to the abrupt Angiogram? rise of BP and uh, fall in uh, heart rate is there? We, uh, we are they not seeing the scale. that Nicodalani Branham happens so spectacularly. You see that, uh, peripheral fistula closure sign uh, where uh, there is a drop in heart rate and abrupt rise in pressure. Yeah. If at, if there are if there are some uh, some youngsters in the crowd, what Dr. Nageshwar says is an extremely important finding called Nicodalani Branham effect, which is whenever there is a sudden cessation of an aortic runoff, that will be associated with sudden hypertension because the aortic runoff is cut off. The moment aortic runoff is cut off and there is a sudden hypertension, the carotid and the aortic arch baroreceptors now act, and the vagus gets triggered, and the vagus now causes sinus bradycardia. 
But the problem with uh, that is that you have to have a patient who is fully in his normal sensorium. Now, when the patient is deeply sedated with various medications which are altering the sympathetic and parasympathetic outflow, such a dramatic uh, uh, Nicodalani Branham effect is not sometimes seen. You are ready with the angiogram? Yeah, but, uh, but uh, Nagesha's point is a yeah, very important point. So this is now the angiographic appearance. Very good position. Very uh, very it good. looks uh, okay for me. Yeah. So now I am going to release it now. So this is the most, the most, I'll do it uh, on most important aspect is that the you have to buttress the aortic end of the uh, aneurysm. Unless you do that, you are leaving the other tissues, so weakened tissue there. So two things you have to know that one is it has to buttress the aortic side. Second thing is that you have to have a minimal waste. There is no minimal waste. That means you may not have occluded completely or some sac is there. So this is a wonderful demonstration of how to close the a simple RSO. This is one of the simplest of the simple RSO we can say. Repeat one more. RSO into RA is very simple to close. Anybody. It doesn't take much because you don't need a very extraordinary e hardware. What you need is a simple peak tile, catheter, Jedkins right or some. Good. Thank you very much. Nage, uh, uh, I would like to say that Jai Ranganath, from me you can anticipate only simple RSO. It's complex means it has to come from you. <laughs> <laughs> complex you don't get uh, show often. <laughs> If you take the statistics, most of the RSO <laughs> okay. is open into the RA, more than 40 to 50 percent. Rest of the 50 okay. percent so will be various. I, I, so we will, we, will be we, we, will, we will come live for the third session in a very short time. Yeah. You can go ahead with your lectures and yeah. then uh, at, at the appropriate time we will enter. Thank you very much, Shiva. It's a wonderful demonstration. We will uh, take up.